way this is going to sit inside the case. The negative terminal is to your right and it faces down and that tip is going to sit in the end of the lug, the ground lug that's at the corner of the heat sink along with C5. I'm just going to take this now and line it up, set it in there. Now you can appreciate how tight these tolerances are because the positive terminal, you'll notice, sits precariously close to the ground terminal and that is your positive input. If you're uncomfortable with that, after you're done assembling, you can put a, a bead of uh, goop adhesive, goop marine adhesive, or uh, RTV silicone adhesive, just to make sure that you don't end up with a short circuit from the positive terminal of this capacitor to the head of the ground screw. But I can tell you that it is very rigid inside this case with that terminal at the corner of the heat sink. That's one of the reasons I put it in here because it holds it nice and snug. This is one of the most difficult solder connections to make in this case because this terminal is the closest to the edge of the case. It wants to suck all the heat away from what you're applying and dissipate it in the side of the case. So I'm applying the heat to the side of the barrel on this ring terminal and I'm letting the solder flow into the center. It will suck up quite a bit of solder so don't be afraid to use a little solder in this. I'm always amazed at how quickly I go through it even in assembling PC boards. There's the completed solder joint. Alright, and there is my spacing from the positive terminal of that capacitor to the ground terminal of the case. Again, about an eighth of an inch. This capacitor does not move. I don't worry about it. I don't think you should either, but very close tolerances. Last part to assemble is the jumper wire that joins the two positive terminals of C5 and C7 together and connects it to the positive input terminal of the pulse width modulator. Again, I always preform these leads before I assemble them. So I bend it up like that. I bend this one around like so, create a crooked L and that allows me to set it right behind the positive terminal of C7 and underneath the positive terminal of C5. There's your close-up showing how it sits behind the positive terminal of C7 and underneath the dangling terminal of C5. So I would use using the same technique.
close up. And last but not least, take the free end of this jumper wire and send it through the barrel of the ring terminal for the positive input underneath the lead where it goes through for the cathode of the transient suppression diode. It's just big enough to fit the stranded wire and the solid lead for the rectifier. Apply a good amount of heat to the outside of the barrel. Feed my solder on one end. And as I apply the heat, the solder will flow through the barrel and actually appear at the other end. And when I see it appear at the other end, I know I've applied enough solder. Tuck the wire in against C7, give it a little bit of extra rigidity there. And that's it. The only thing left are the wing nuts. I could use hex nuts. Wing nuts are fun. Because A, you can tighten them by hand, and B, I just like doing that. There you have it, the completed 150 amp constant current pulse width modulator circuit. All that's left to do now is to test and calibrate.